ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me. My name is Chris, and uh, today we're not going to be doing any tutorials or, you know, skits or anything like that. Today is a, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a video that's basically on a personal level, and I wanted to share with you uh, my life and experience with um, lupus, living with lupus, uh, SLE, which is the um, worst kind of lupus you can have there's like three types um i've had medical problems all my you know since i was about 30 i had two heart attacks by the time i was 30 years old uh on my father's side it's uh, uh it's been kind of rough as far as um you know medical history goes so uh when i was um, 30 like i said i had a couple heart attacks uh, then, uh, within around the late mid nineties or so, I was diagnosed with something called thrombocytosis and, uh, it's an incurable, incurable disease. And basically your bone marrow produces too many, too many blood platelets. Usually the average or normal range is, uh, 150 thousandths to 400 thousandths. Uh, mine uh, was up to 1,600,000, so it needed, you know, I got fixed for that. Could have been a cause of my heart attacks, and uh, also I had a clogged artery in one of my right legs. Fast forward to uh, 2011. 2011, um, I started getting sick. I was a uh, gym rat. I used to love working out and stuff like that, and doing really well and uh, all of a sudden I started getting weaker then I became very uh, fatigued and tired quickly after three or four hours of working uh, I felt like I worked you know a 12 15 hour day I was so exhausted I couldn't even you know then uh, I started getting like sick randomly getting fevers and uh, started throwing up um things of that sort and just feeling overall you know kind of an ill feeling i got what is called a um a butterfly rash and i'll try to show a picture here and you know I'll put up a picture of a person who has it butterfly rash is uh was really surprising i got it one day and i looked in the mirror and i had a red rash that kind of started here and went across my cheeks the top of my cheeks like that and uh turns out you know that was um an indication of lupus i didn't know it of course uh i started getting these lesions and incurable things these things that wouldn't heal on my face um i guess you can call it like a rash or something i don't know but um on this side of my face I had this thing that would not go away, and it absolutely was, it was painful, uh, would not heal, it was there forever, so uh, my doctor did uh, what is called, sent me into a dermatologist, and they did a, what is called a deep um, uh, biopsy, and so uh, I got a call from the doctor, the dermatologist, and he says, Chris, you don't have cancer that's what they're checking me out for he said you don't have cancer dude you have uh, lupus uh, but to confirm this you need to go through a series of tests it's very difficult to diagnose so I go wow you know so they sent me to a rheumatologist uh, they ran a bunch of tests on me it turns out I did have uh, lupus lupus SLE so um you know i was bummed so i uh you know already had a multitude of uh health problems and so i asked the doc you know, what's the prognosis you know am i gonna die pretty soon or what and he told me well based on your past history and you know you're kind of banged up chris he says so I would um, guess on 10 years and I go wow that's not very long um, at that time I was 50 years old 
this is in 2011. Uh, so now I'm into my 60s now. I did, luckily, last year, still alive. I have a you know positive attitude and everything, so which helped. So anyways, after that, I started having other problems. I started having uh, kidney problems. So I wound up having uh, stage 3 kidney failure. So uh, they discovered one of my kidneys was small, shrunk, and full of cysts. So they checked that out. Thankfully, it wasn't cancerous. Um, but, you know, I do have a kidney thing, and that's incurable as well. Uh, other things started arising. Fevers that will just pop up and last sometimes a week. Um, you get kind of used to them after a while, though. Fatigue constantly and tiredness. I got to sleep a lot. Uh, my doctor said uh, usually people with lupus sleep around 10 hours a day, uh, which is good. So that is true. I take a two-hour nap actually late afternoon, early evening. Um, I'll get up, have dinner, drink coffee, <laughs> and then go to bed around midnight and sleep till 9 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I get a lot of sleep um, and fatigue. If you're doing like chores or whatever, you start getting fatigued really bad. Uh, along with also, I got uh, arthritis, uh, which especially was bad on my spine. Wound up having to have a spinal fusion uh, because my discs were just so jacked up. They are off... Um, Big t I can't remember, like, some outrageous number, like 15 millimeters or something like that. A uh, doctor told me, you know, I can become a um, paraplegic at any time if something just moved a little bit. So I'm going, wow. You know, so I had surgery done. They did something with cadaver bone, uh, something with the disc. I don't know if they use a cadaver bone, you know, a cadaver's disc or whatever. But anyways, it's fixed. I still have that metal in there, uh, which has been causing pain issues since. But at least I'm able to uh, get around. I uh, had problems walking before because of it. But I'm able to get around. I'm, I'm not going to become a paraplegic at any time. Uh, no worries of that sort of thing. Um but the arthritis, um, you know, gets in my hands, uh, it's in my fingers, uh, your knees, your neck. I need another back surgery, which I've been put preempting uh, because um, it sucks, you know, for one thing. Um, a doctor thinks he doesn't have to do a fusion, that he can repair it, but... Um, it, it the recovery time for a back surgery is a long time you know it takes like two months um, so I've been putting it off until the very very last possible moment uh, that I have to I really don't want to <laughs> really don't want to have to deal with another surgery so I've been going to pain management for that also had in 2012 I had a two uh, mild strokes. They're called uh, TIAs. I don't ask me what the what that means. I can't remember. But basically, you have a stroke. You lose, you know, like your feeling and half your body and all that stuff. You become paralyzed on one side. Um, but it the obstruction breaks away and frees itself. So. You basically go back to normal pretty much you know I have memory problems but you know that happened to me twice within a one month one month period uh, haven't had any problems since I've been seeing a neurologist for that but I take uh, aspirin and you know for to keep my blood thin and all that stuff uh, what also comes along too is a uh, constant dry eye and mouth I have to drink water constantly uh, I have water with me all the time. Uh, if I don't have a water with me, I'm just like, I got to, if, if I get in my car and I forgot it, forgot it, I'm headed to a store somewhere and getting a bottle or two. 
uh, because what will happen, my tongue will start sticking to the roof of my mouth. Very inconvenient. Uh, your eyes, you've got to have uh, use natural tears, uh, drops for my eyes. Um, that's a, you know, something else you're going to deal with. So it's, you're, you're constantly doing maintenance on yourself. I have about 10 doctors, um, all of which are different specialists. Um, kidney doctor, obviously, a rheumatologist who... Um, uh, takes care of my arthritis and lupus. That's what they do. Uh, I didn't realize a rheumatologist did that until I was sent to him. Uh, I have an oncologist who um, she takes care of my thrombocytosis. <clears throat> so my blood counts are constantly monitored. My uh, platelets. I've had uh, a lot of ups and downs in my white and red counts. Uh, so sometimes it gets to a really bad state um, and they have to um, run me in for additional testing and stuff, but it always seems to go back down within a reasonable level. Uh, and they pretty much came to the conclusion that they think it's you know because of the lupus. Um, I'm on 18 different medications. Of course, you know that does include, a vitamin and the uh, 81 milligram um, aspirin I take to keep my blood thin and stuff like that. I have some hardening, hardening of the arteries. I um, have a terrible memory. Uh, eyesight is good though. I had a um, was it? Um, I had a uh, laser surgery back in the early 2000s, and it was great. You know, 2020 vision and all that stuff. And discovered, found out that you know, so every year I got to go to the eye doctor uh, because it's a medical thing. They check inside your eyes uh, to make sure there's no buildup deposit from medication called high hydroxychloroquine that um, uh, is what maintains and keeps me you know, chugging along here um, and helps uh, prevent problems with me with my lupus, but it tends to build up residue, residue inside your eyes. So I have to have that checked out every year. My eyesight is still great. The doc says actually your eyesight can become better. I don't know if it's because of the lupus or because of the medication, but anyways, um, you know, I've had great distance vision uh close is a different you know near vision is a different story you still need a reading glasses you know i'm an old guy i'm in my 60s so um you know got to do that but um it's it's kind of a constant uh fighting going to doctors you know a pain taking medication all the time on the plus side of things if you maintain your health, do what your doctor says, eat well, uh, drink lots of water, um, you can extend your life considerably. Uh, I have done so already, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm going to die at any time, uh, and I was given a 10-year sentence, <laughs> if you want to say. Uh, happy to have uh, blown that out of the water. And um, so when I had my big 6-0 last year, I was uh, pretty happy about it. I go, yeah, I mean, you know, I made it. I'm 60 now, and, you know, I'm still doing pretty good. Um, what also come, this is kind of a sad part, and um, not kind of leer about share, sharing this, but I'm going to anyways. Um, you have a sometimes a lot of psychological issues, and that involves depression, anxiety, um, things of that sort. Uh, when you feel like crap all the time, or a lot of the times, uh, it tends to drag you down mentally. It did for me. I had um, extreme pain. I mean, extreme. 
Uh, and I'm a kind of a guy that does the, you know, mind over matter thing. And I built a really high tolerance to pain over the years. Um, so that with my pain medication, I've been able to, you know, kind of get by. But last year, uh, in the middle of the year or a little bit earlier than that, uh, I started experiencing some severe pain in my back uh, because I need that other surgery. Um, it's the discs are spinning around down there and they're pinching my sciatic, which is extremely painful. Uh, my situation is bad. I couldn't walk on it. Uh, so, you know, I was losing my mind, literally. So, um, I didn't want to be in that space anymore. My, I went to see my, pers my uh, primary physician, and uh, he's a good guy. He ran me through some kind of a test, a psychological exam, and I failed miserably. So, he decided, you know, he's going to send me into pain management, which I really appreciated. And then I got some professional help um, from uh, doctors, not just therapists. Uh, one uh, was a pres prescribing doctor who prescribed um, uh, anti antidepressants, you know. Um, and then the other doctor was actually uh, there for counsel. So with the two, those two doctors and the uh, pain management, it's been great. And pain management will work with you very well in taking care of you. I have had to get regularly spinal epidural. Uh, it's like a steroid type shot uh, that they shoot into the, the point where the nerve is a problem and then goes down your leg. Uh, I've had it and it worked about, it worked good about six, seven months the first time. And the next time was like three months, and the next month out, the next time after that, it was one month. So um, it started becoming less effective. I asked the doctor, is there, is, "Am I just getting used to the medication?" He says, "No, your back's just getting worse." So um, I said, "Well, is there other, um, you know, course of action we can take? Is there a stronger shot? Is there?" stronger medication I can, I, that I can take or uh, more of what I'm taking already. So he said, we can do both. And this is what I like about pain management because they're there to make sure uh, you're comfortable. So he bumped up my Norco uh, to a, a much higher uh, dosage, uh, which was great. And then I came in, uh, I went in and he gave me a, uh, I guess it's basically almost like a double dose of this uh, steroid stuff. And it seems to be doing pretty good so far. Uh, I had that done last month in December of uh, 2021. So I have to see how long it lasts. Um, and like I said, so far so good. Keeping my fingers crossed. Um, the next step and if it gets even worse and this doesn't st you know this doesn't work uh, my buddy has a similar situation he said they actually went in and burned the nerves but they grow back so you still got to have it done over again uh, so I'm hoping I don't get to that point but um, like I said I want to preempt this surgery as long as I can it just sucks, and you get a nasty-ass scar on your back. I have a 13-inch scar down the middle of my back right now, and I'd rather not have another one at the bottom. Um, but um, I've been um, fairly happy, you know, more so now that I'm getting help with psychological and, uh, and, and pain management. My doctor's on top of things. You know, if I need anything, I can go see him. Or just like any of my other doctors, I have an amazing, an amazing group of doctors who take very, very good care of me. If it wasn't for them, I probably would have been dead a long time ago. Um, I see a neurologist uh, because I started developing. This is one thing I forgot to tell you about. Um, 
I see him one because of the TIAs I had, but there I started developing one of his uh, tremors. And I thought I had like Parkinson. My hands shake really bad. And so it turns out it's some uh, neurological uh, defect. Uh, I guess it could be caused by the lupus or whatever. So they gave me uh, a medication that they give people who have um, uh, seizures, you know. Um, so I take this anti-seizure medication and um, doing well, you know, helps out. Not perfect, way better than it was. Um, almost have like um, the tics, you know, like a... Um, Tourette syndrome, like uh, you know, kind of, and I'll yell out that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, like I said, all the doctors are great, um, and they follow me closely. I have nurses, nurse practitioners, or actual doctors calling me every month. Um, the oncologist and the uh, rheumatologist and the uh, neuro. Uh, nephrologist yeah the kidney guy um it's like every four months or so but they're on top of it um i feel pretty good like i said i'm not expecting to die anytime soon and um oh i had to be permanently disabled because of all this stuff sorry things are popping up in my head i'll try to close with this but um uh i became permanently disabled um because of all these issues and so uh it, it was a fight you know i tried to do it myself and you get three chances and the third strike you're out that's why i did it twice i had two strikes against me so i finally decided to get an attorney which i should have done probably in the first place so um the attorney uh and the organization that uh, they were with uh, was diligent in um uh, taking care of it uh, it's like the advocates type thing but they do have attorneys obviously because they have to go to court the one I dealt with was in New Jersey and I'm in California they still had an attorney come out here for me and and handled it uh, I won the case um, and uh, it was tough uh, but it took me four years to finally get uh, get it <clears throat> Uh, but I, I thank my family, uh, my friends who really supported me. I have lost friends because of this. Uh, some people, you tell them, and they, you know, I had a friend, a guy who was my friend over 40 years, and he just bailed on me. I guess, you know, I had to be perfect or something for him or whatever. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I've lost several or many friends because of it, um, which is sucks, and that's bullshit you know, in my p opinion, but you know who your true friends are uh, in the long run. So uh, I've gotten great support. Uh, I am a very positive person. I always try to stay on a positive side of things and uh, not sweat the little things in life because trust me, um, when you've been given time limits on your life, you want to make the best out of it that you can. I don't think I'll speak. I'm, I think I'm about done what I have to say right now. Uh, if I have anything else, I'll do it. Maybe a part two to this uh, thing. But uh, again, I wanted to thank all of you for watching. I appreciate your time and um, uh, patience. I know it can be kind of boring listening to somebody talk about their health thing. But uh, I just wanted to share it because uh, I myself was curious uh, when I first got lupus and I was watching other people on YouTube who shared their experiences. So I thought I might do that as well. And um, wanted you to know that even though I was given 10 years, I'm still here. So don't give up hope. Um, people are living much longer now. Used to be way back in the dark ages. Um, five years and you're dead period uh it's incurable different times now the medical thing has really uh gotten better leaps and bounds so everyone thanks again uh i appreciate it my name is chris 
And if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, you please, you can put it down in the comments section. Um, if you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you get notifications. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. God bless. And stay out of trouble. <laughs> Bye, everybody.